WSSB, Girl TV. Hi, I'm Peyton. And I'm Michaela. Welcome to WSSB, Girl TV, where we're strong, smart, and bold. In today's episode, we blast off on a trip to NASA. Zandy explores things we use every day that got their start at NASA. Peyton tells us about an astronaut, Sally Rye. Helena interviews our science teacher, Miss Malia, who led NASA activities with our girls this summer. Peyton interviews girls who went on an overnight trip to the Kennedy Space Center to watch the Mars rover landing live as it was happening. And Helena joins me in sharing our adventure there. We'll also reshow on Maya's interview with Denise Coleman, a NASA educator. So buckle up and prepare to blast off. Three, two, one. Welcome to Girl TV. I'm Peyton. Early, earlier in July, a very special woman to our country died. Sally's full name is Sally Christian Ride. She was born in Los Angeles, California on May 26, 1951. That means she died when she was only 61 years old. Her parents were Dale and Joyce Ride. She had one sister named Karen. Sally is famous for being the first American woman in space and the third woman in the world in space after two Russian female cosmonauts, which is just another word for Russian or Soviet astronauts. She attended a space program in January of 1978. That was her first time. Before she started a space program, she was a scientist and she had a PhD in physics. She went on two space missions. Her first space mission was on June 19, 1983. She was 32 years old. And guess how much time she spent in space? She spent a total of 14 days, 7 hours, and 46 minutes in space. That's out of this world. In 1997, she retired from the space program. Sadly, she just died this past July on the 23rd. The reason she died is that she was battling pancreatic cancer. Pancreatic cancer has to do with someone's pancreas, which is an organ that serves as one of the filters found deep in our body. Some people like to say it's shaped like a fish. There are two elementary schools, one in Texas and one in Maryland, which are named after Sally Ride, so we always remember her. Another way that we will always remember her is that she led the way for other women who would like to be in the space program. Thanks for watching The Space Story. I'm Peyton. Bye. Hi, I'm Zandy. Did you know that many of the things we use every day got their start or were made better by NASA? That's right. Things they made for the astronauts and to be used in outer space we now use at home or at school. That's amazing. Let's start with the air thermometer. Instead of measuring temperature using a column of mercury, which expands as it heats up, this thermometer has a lens like a camera and detects inferior energy, which we feel as heat. The warmer something is, like our body, the more inferior energy it puts out. This technology was originally developed to detect the birth of stars. Smoke detectors were first used in the Earth orbiting space station called Skylab, launched back in 1973 to help detect any toxic vapors. They are now used in most homes and other buildings to warn people of fires. Sun tire glasses are a newer, improved version of sunglasses. They came from research done on materials to protect the eyes of welders working on spacecraft. Protective lenses were developed that blocked almost all the wavelengths of radiation that might harm the eyes while letting through all the useful wavelengths that let us see. Shock absorbing helmets are special football helmets that use a padding of tempered foam, a shock absorbing material first developed for use in aircraft seats. These helmets have three times the shock absorbing ability of previous types. Invisible braces got their start in space. These T-straining braces use a bracket that are made of clearly invisible translucent, almost see-through ceramic material. This material is a spin-off of NASA's advanced ceramic research to develop new tough materials for spacecraft and aircraft. A special aerodynamic bicycle wheel, also called a tri-wheel, 
uses NASA research in airfoils, which are wings, and design software developed for the space program. The three spokes on the wheel act like wings, making a bicycle very efficient for racing. Joystick controllers are, all, are also used for lots of things now, including video games and vehicles for people with disabilities. These devices evolved from researchers to develop a controller for the Apollo Lunar Research into how humans actually operate called human factors. Wow, so many things I use came from NASA. Visit the kids game section at nasa.gov to learn more. It's where I got all my information for Girl TV. I'm Sandy. Bye. Hi, I'm Helena. And today I'm here with Miss Malia, the science teacher at Girls Inc. of Sarasota, Florida. She was the reason why 20 girls from Girls Inc. could sleep over at NASA. Why were you interested in Girls Inc.? I was interested in Girls Inc. because I really feel passionate about science and I thought it would be a great place to teach girls and get them excited about science. Where did you go to for college? I went to the University of Florida and I got my bachelor's in biochemistry. When did you have an interest in science? I actually thought I wanted to be an accountant for a long time and then my last year in high school, my senior year, I did really well on a chemistry test and that's when it kind of hit me. What NASA project did you work on over the summer? Um, we did a lot of different projects. Um, probably we started off with our mission patches, and our mission patches were to um, get the girls involved as a team and let them know like our mission for the summer was to learn more about NASA. And um, then we started off with a rocket racer, which um, was demonstrating the laws, Newton's laws, and. Um, allowed the girls to see all the time and the effort engineers at NASA put into creating rovers and things like that and also for them to see that it doesn't happen the first time they have to keep working at it and keep taping in our situation <laughs> and um, they really enjoyed it and a lot of the girls cars went really far and others um, needed a lot of modifications but it was a lot of fun to start off with and then um, Next, we worked on our robotic hand, which the girls constructed a hand out of cardboard and rubber bands and tape. And that was really to show the girls like all of the little precision and things that go into um, making robots um, that the people at NASA have to do and let them just get a little taste of what they have to do just to make a hand go up and down and things like that. And our last experiment was the rocket launch and we launched a rocket across our tennis courts which was really exciting and that really focused on the design of rockets and how you can place one thing somewhere and it can just completely change how far your rocket goes and the girls really got to see that when they made them so it was a lot of good activities and a lot of fun. What did you do when you found out about a couple of girls from Girls Inc. could go to NASA? Um, I was really, really excited, and then I realized that I had to narrow it down to only 20 girls, so which then I, I was a little bit stressed about it because everyone did so well, but um, it was mostly just excitement. What was your favorite part about NASA, and why? Um, my favorite part probably would be um, just watching all of the girls get to experience all of these things that not everyone gets to experience and um, seeing them get excited about NASA and all of the um, activities that we did were really great so those are my favorites. What did you learn at NASA? I learned a lot of things. We went through um, a lot of the history of NASA that I didn't get to learn about in school, which I thought was really exciting because they used um, all kinds of ways to show you, like they reenacted the Apollo um, 11, I think it was, and that was exciting because I wasn't around that time, so a lot of that, the history of NASA and what's coming up was what I mostly learned about. What advice would you give girls my age that are interested in science? Uh, my advice would be to 
um, continue to do well in school and then find your little spot in science that you really care about and are passionate about because there's so many things in science that I mean it can it can be for everyone there's no limits thank you miss Malia for girl TV I'm Helena bye Girls on the Run is a program that takes place after school for girls to learn life lessons. She sees the starting line, she just can't wait. Her heart is pounding, yeah, she knows it's fate. The count goes off, the way begins. Her breath is steady, she's with her friends. She's a girl on the run. Choice girls, there's so much wisdom. They will come up with so much to help each other. It's just incredible. My favorite part of Girls on the Run is getting to talk with the girls about how this program affects them and changes their life. Girls on the Run is the best thing you can ever imagine. You get to hang out, and play, and learn stuff. It's a fun environment and you can work with your teammates. Coaches, they help you out and your teammates, they encourage you. It makes you stronger and it makes you build your confidence. They're inspiring me to do whatever I want to do. I believe in myself and I do really good things. You should like celebrate your life. If you're feeling down, they will always help you back up and make you feel much better. We hear it all the time from the coaches and the women and the families that we work with that while the program has certainly significantly changed their girls' lives for the better, how it's improved the lives of the adults that come in contact with the program has been astounding. And it just makes me feel really happy when I just get really emotional sometimes. Up ahead, the finish line faces they know.
and I'm here with Denise Coleman, NASA scientist. Please tell our girls what you do in your job. Uh, I am currently an education specialist for NASA. I work with the Summer of Innovation program, which is what is being run here at the Girls Inc. And we came today to see how the camp was running and how the girls were um, having fun in the camps. What are some projects that you have worked on? Um, I have worked on the shuttle program most of my career, so I have been in supporting roles uh, through throughout my uh, career. I started in 1978. Wow. I know. Do you have to wear any uniform? No, um, but we do try to stay professional. Um, we wear clothes that maybe you would wear to church or um, to an office visit. So uh, we don't wear beach clothes or um, uh, play clothes. Uh, we try to make sure that we look professional. How many people work with you? Um, over the years, I've worked with hundreds of people. Um, right now, I'm in an office. Uh, three of us work on the Summer of Innovation program, and then I'm part of an, a larger group of about 25, and then a larger group of, of that is around uh, 50, so on a daily basis. For Girl TV, I'm Amaya. Bye. Girl TV. I'm Peyton. Today we are going to be interviewing some girls that went on the trip to NASA as a part of our space summer program. So Shamira, explain the trip, the whole trip, in one word. Exciting. Well, it was adventurous. Cold. <laughs> in one word, it was like, it was the most amazing trip I've ever been to. The best. It was amazing. Well, it was extravagant. What was your favorite part of the trip? When we saw the at the IMAX. Movie. My favorite part was watching the rover land on Mars. Well, we got to have dinner with a real astronaut. My favorite part was when we got to do the activities of the eggs and stuff. But the most one was um. Like the egg would like, you had to make it not crack and like you had to put balloons on it and stuff it up with things so it wouldn't break. Um, when uh, we had to do an egg drop and um, keep our cargo safe and it was actually really exciting for me. It was really fun so I loved it. We know it was more than a two hour drive. What did you do to keep yourself busy? Um, I talked to my friends, I, I made friendship bracelets, and I did, um, I went to sleep on the bus. Well, my friends were in the van too, so we, I talked to them, and then we actually had some games and puzzles that we could do on the way there. I read, I did four braids, and I talked to my friends. Um, we would like talk, and some of the girls would let us um, borrow some books to read. And Miss Kim and Miss Kate let us um, play a game with us, like to see. And we heard the music, and Miss Kim and Miss Kate let us, um, um, you know, the car license plate game. Yeah. We played that in the car, like from different places, not just from Florida. You had to pick like. You had to look at the back of the cars to see their license plate and see if they're from New York or like California and stuff. And then you would check them out, check them out in the paper. And then whoever got to finish it first with all the thing, all the license plates from the United States would win, and they would get um, um, a special prize. Well, um, I really just talked to my friends and we like just played around really. And it was, and we just did some games and stuff like that. So. Well, I didn't actually. I just sit, sat there and took pictures and showed everybody my pictures. And then I just started playing around and played cards. We also heard it was freezing cold and you only got four hours of sleep, 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. How did you handle that? Was it tiring? Yeah, I was very tired. 
Well, when it was at night, we had a like train. So I, well, I calm myself down, and so I can go to sleep, and then I won't feel as tired in the morning. I wore a long sleeve shirt, a jacket, sweatpants, two pairs of socks, and a hospital blanket. Well, um, when we woke up, like we went to um, to the van and, and we first we ate breakfast and then we went to the van and stuff and then we slept in the van on the way back and then in the morning when we got here to Girls Inc. We took, some of the girls took a shower, but some of them didn't because they didn't want to or something like that. And I took a shower and then that just made me cool off and stuff. So that would keep me fresh for the rest of the day. And then when I got home, I went straight to bed. Well, my house is not cold, but I go to cold places. And I stayed up till like six months, so it didn't really bother me about anything. I didn't, I was, I was waking up in the middle of the night and sleepwalking to the bathroom. And I went back to sleep and then I had to wake up again because I had to use the bathroom again. And then I barely got any sleep. And then I had to wake up again and I had to like to change, change. And I spent too long in the bathroom. Explain what you had for dinner and lunch and any other information on the meals. For dinner, I had a cheeseburger. For breakfast, I had cereal, muffin, and yogurt. Well, for dinner, we I had a cheeseburger, corn, salad, and a drink. And for breakfast, we had cereal, um, yogurt, muffins, and juice. For dinner, I had a cheeseburger with salad, orange, and I forgot what else. And breakfast? Breakfast we had, I had a muffin, cereal, milk, and yogurt. Um, for breakfast, I had cereal, orange, orange juice, and um, I think it, oh yeah, muffins too. And for dinner we had, um, I had, you get to choose like a um, hot dog or cheeseburger or hamburger or um, a, I forgot what it was called, but it was something else, it was good. So, um, I got a cheeseburger and a corn and I, or oranges. With juice. Um, I had the chicken grilled sandwich. It was the best chicken sandwich I ever had. And for breakfast, um, they gave us multiple choices. And um, I think they did a pretty good job on feeding everybody in the thing. <laughs> for dinner, I had a chicken sandwich. And for breakfast, I had cereal, a fluffy muffin that was really delicious, and a Capri Sun and some milk. What was one thing that you learned about space or the NASA program during the trip? I learned that it takes eight and a half months to go to Mars and that it takes many steps just to land. Like there's how it, half of the rover falls off and then the parachute comes on and it slowly makes the way down and then the parachute comes back off and it bounces onto Mars. That when you drink water in space, you had to clamp the straw down for the water doesn't spill all over the place. One thing that I learned about the NASA trip was that it doesn't take one try to like do it perfect all the way up to space and stuff. It takes, you have to do it over and over to get the hang of it. And to, if you want it perfect, you have to keep on going for your dream. I learned that uh, it takes a long time to go to a, like, Mars and stuff like that. That there was somebody that played golf on the moon because I never knew that somebody could do that. Do you think you would want to go back on the adventure again with even more activities? Yes. 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 Oh yes, yeah, so that would be like the same thing, but it would be funner. 
Of course I would. It's like, it, that wasn't my last time. I know it. <laughs> Absolutely. Do you have anything else you want to share about your trip? Well, it was fun and exciting. That you should, you should bring a lot of clothes to put on because it's super cold. Just one little thing. If you ever go to NASA, just always stay calm. That it was really fun. From Girl TV, I'm Peyton. Three, two, one, blast off. Got this evening. <laughs> what was it? Some random Okay. And I'm here with here with yeah. Bleh. No, because it's sentence with Denise Coleman is like right above it and it's really hard to see it. Okay. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Hi, my name's Mai and I'm here with the